Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. I have built many, many characters over half the cast at this point, and as such, I have farmed a lot of artifacts for them. And so today we're going to be talking about which are the best artifact sets, which ones you should farm, which ones are worth your resin, which ones you should leave to the wayside, which ones are good for certain characters but aren't worth it otherwise. And stick around to the end where we're going to be talking about the best artifact set that I think every single account should farm for. Let's get started. We're going to fill up the details tier first with these garbage artifacts that I don't remember their names. You don't remember their name. We don't need to know about them. We don't need to talk about them. The only one I'll, I'll highlight is the Berserker artifact set and the Gambler's artifact set, I think. They can be okay in early game pre-AR45. Pre Otherwise, don't take two looks at them and we'll move on. The next artifact I'm going to put in the D tier is the Maiden's Beloved artifact set. It is really, really bad. There is no reason to ever step foot in this domain anymore. It's pretty much useless, outclassed by another artifact set that isn't really all that good either. <laughs> the ocean hued clam which i'm going to be putting into the b tier you can go for the ocean hued clam set i wouldn't really e ever recommend farming for it specifically but it is a reasonably okay option on some characters since we're talking about the ocean hued clam it is with the Husk of Opulent Dream set you should get if you have Ito, Albedo, and you should definitely go for the set. And getting an Ocean Eat Clam set on the way is not the absolute worst, although it's definitely not something I would recommend going for on its own. Next is the ta Tenacity of the Millist artifact set. It's another artifact set that I would say you can go for, but it's generally not the most efficient, just because it is in the in the domain with the Pale Flame set. When the Tenacity gets added to the strong box, I will put it in the A tier for farming. But currently, as it stands, getting the getting the Pale Flame set is just not that. Useful. It is okay for Eula, and again, same with the Bloodstained Chivalry, but I don't think Eula is good enough and does enough damage to justify farming for these two sets. I have done it, I do have a well built Eula, but her best team is a Hyper Bloom team as a Hyper Fridge enabler and as a driver for that Hyper Bloom team, and she just doesn't contribute enough damage to really justify going for these artifact sets, in my opinion. If you are really dedicated Eula main, absolutely they are an A tier artifact set, but generally I will put them in the B. If you're going for two pieces on these artifact sets, it could be a little better and same with the tenacity of the millith set if you're going for a two piece for nilu or a four, or just a just a four piece hp set just to have the set bonus that can be worth so maybe i will put the tenacity here maybe you could argue these here because the tenacity of the millith set you don't need to get a ton of crit staff generally you're just gonna be doing full hp and so that can be a little bit easier to farm and make it a lot more worth it so i guess it changed my mind a little bit on next one is the archaic petra and the retracing bolide these sets are both outclassed and extremely inefficient well the archaic petra does have a use sometimes it is the best artifact set that you can use. It is just extremely, extremely inefficient. I think when it gets added to the strong box, which I definitely think it will in Fontaine, you can move it up here. But for now, because the retracing bola is generally always outclassed, sorry, you Amia mains, um, it's going to go over. Next is going to be the Lava Walker set. I'm going to go ahead and say you can go for the Lava Walker set, but there's generally better things you could be going for, especially it is in the artifact strong box, so you can go for it, but generally just going to be more worth going for something else for those characters, because even in a mono pyro, you know, Dea team, Mono Pyro, Klee team, there's still generally other options that perform pretty much just as well or better than farming a full artifact set just for a Mono Pyro team, which generally aren't the best teams overall anyway. The Crimson Witch of Flames is the, art is the artifact that's along with the Lava Walkers in the domain, and you can go for, you sh probably should go for the Crimson Witch of Flames if you're maining Hu Tao. You can get away with Shimanawa's Reminiscence, you can get away with Gilded Dreams, which is kind of what I'm doing right now as I finish my Crimson Witch of Flames set. So I would say it toes the line between A and B tier, but I do think it is enough of an upgrade to justify putting it in the A tier. Next is going to be the Heart of Death set, which is along with the Blizzard Strayer set. The Blizzard Strayer set is one of the most broken artifacts artifact sets in the game. The only thing is not every account is going to be running a freeze team. And so I wouldn't say that every account should have a Blizzard Strayer artifact set, but it really, really is a top tier artifact set and it, it, it deserves S tier in its power level. But I'm ranking these artifact sets more in their terms of value for your account. And if you have Ayaka, 100%, it's an S tier. If you have, you know, if you're doing Freeze Ganyu, even Freeze Rosaria, Freeze Kaya, it should absolutely be S tier 100%. And that's what the A tier is. You should absolutely farm for this set if you have X character. And it's definitely much higher. I would put Crimson Witch of Flames much lower on that tier list. The Heart of Death set, you can go for it, but it's not the most efficient. Even it's two, two piece, it's gonna be pretty much just as good on Child. Gladiator is generally better or just as good on Ayato, and you're gonna be getting lots of Gladiator sets. And I think it's a solid, decent B tier artifact set. I kind of want to put that here, but I think it's just a little bit better. Next is the Echoes of an Offering. Echoes of the Offering is extremely inefficient to go for because it is in a set with only the Zhao set. And unless you have 30 ping or less, this set is here. So the only time I would recommend putting 
this set in the B or the A tier is if you have Ayato, if you have Zhao, you really love both of these characters and your ping is 30 or less. So for 99% of players, this set is absolutely not worth going for at all. But if you're a Zhao Ayato main, this set can be worth it. Speaking of Zhao, it's generally outclassed. If you love Zhao this much, you can go, this set could be A tier. If you think Zhao is a little bit short, which I think he's a little bit short, then you're better off going for the Desert Pavilion Chronicle for him, just like you should probably go for the Desert Pavilion Chronicle if you have Wanderer, because it comes with the Flowers of Paradise Lost artifact set, which is a really good artifact set. It's not the most efficient set to farm for itself, unless you have Zhao or Wanderer, but if you're going for Zhao or Wanderer, and you want to run a Hyper Bloom team, which most people do, or a Burgeon team, then this can be a pretty decent set to go for, and generally since it's not all that much worse for Zhao than the Vermilion, it's definitely, it's generally a more efficient and more advised set to go for for Zhao. That's what I'll be doing. If you're listening, Zyox, I don't think that you're wrong for going for this artifact set. I love to go for, my, for the best artifact set for my favorite characters too. Next set is the Thunder Soother and the Thundering Fury artifact set. You should farm the Thundering Fury set if you want to use pretty much most aggravate DPSs, such as Kaching, such as Sino. Absolutely worth going for, especially because it's in the strong box. You can go for the Thunder Soother set, but it is not the most efficient. Generally, Thundering Fury or a two-piece Thundering Fury two piece something else is going to be good one of the worst parts about the thunder soother is even if is you need an a four piece set for it to work the two piece really doesn't do anything at all but you can go for it it's just not the most efficient now two sets left are the wanderers troop and the gladiators finale artifact sets not really going to be farming a lot for wanderers troop or for gladiators finale i'd say if you have ganyu you can put it here but even something like the shimanawa's reminiscence which you're going to be getting passively as well works with ganyu and generally you're just going to be getting these passively so i can can say maybe the Wanderer's Troop you can put up here for Ganyu, for, for Melt Ganyu, but in general, because you're going to be getting it passively just from playing the game for a long time, you're not really going to have to farm for these sets. You're just going to eventually get great sets for both of them. So I would say there you can go for them, but they're generally not the most efficient. Now we're getting into the big bucks. And I will say, if you've been liking the video so far, if it's been helpful to you, please give it a like so that it can spread to more people. It lets me know that you enjoy the content, and I promise you will get better artifact luck if you like the video, because Hoyoverse is watching. Now for some sets that I think every single account in Genshin Impact should farm. You can already tell they're right here, but let's talk about why. <laughs> the first is the Noblesse set. This is a set that you can farm for in the in the artifact strong box, and you absolutely should. Characters like Bennett were some of the most valuable characters in the game. Cryo support characters like Shenha, Kaya, Rosaria, they're going to be going for these sets. There's lots of other characters that will also go for this. Diona, and so that's an S tier artifact set for sure. The next one is the Emblem of Severed Fates domain. So many characters use the Emblem of Severed Fates artifact set. If we look at the top characters in the game, Sing Cho, Yalan, Raiden for her damage build, Shang Ling. That's already so many top tier characters that use that artifact set, so it is absolutely an S tier. When eventually it gets added to the artifact strong box, you will probably never look at Shimanawa's Reminiscence again. <laughs> you can go for it. There's generally better artifact sets you can go for for most characters. I think it's basically just Yoimiya that will want to go for this set. And other characters can use it because you're going to be getting a passive set anyways from farming the emblem. Next is the Deepwood Memories. Every single account should have a Deepwood Memories artifact set. Very, very important. Dendro is so broken. Hyper Bloom is so broken. Aggravate is very, very good. And every account should have some great dendro sets if not even two or three sets of this because well maybe not three but at least one for each side of the abyss if you're like me and you like to keep your artifacts with that character and not do too much switching around then maybe you do want three sets but that's where that would go i'm a little bit torn with this set because tech it comes it's so efficient coming with this set and it is really really good i don't think it's a completely necessary set because you can always go two piece two piece or you can go flowers of paradise lost so maybe it belongs more here but because it won't be added to the strong box for a long time Time, and it's going to be here for a while. Farming this set is almost never a waste. The Viridus and Venerer set, of course, Animo is super, super broken. Reducing the resistance to any element swirled by 40% is absolutely huge, and it is a must-have on absolutely every single account. These final two sets I've saved to the end, and they are actually going to go in S tier set, in S tier. You cannot farm for these artifact sets. There's no way to do that, but if you don't actively lock these pieces, you will discard them. For myself, it was, it was a year or more into the game before I realized how good these artifacts set were and so I was feeding them I've fed many god tier exile and instructors pieces into my 
into my other artifacts for leveling them up, you re I'm putting them in S tier because every account should have them. Even if you're not using Goro, who's using Exile right now, or even if you're not, you know, using a character that's that's needing them, you should be locking the good pieces, especially crit rate pieces, energy recharge pieces. Those look for those substats, elemental mastery on the instructors potentially. These are sets that you really, really don't want to miss out on because a lot of support characters, maybe even a Bennett, maybe a Goro, maybe someone else, really, really value these artifact sets. And it's very, very important that you lock them so that you don't accidentally throw them all away. You don't even have to farm them, but every single account should have at least one set or more of these pieces. Let me know what you think. I think if you follow this tier list, you will have a great spot on your account. You will be very efficient. I really think you can't go wrong going for any of these top artifact sets. Again, don't actually farm for this. Do it in the strong box. Farm for either this domain or the emblem domain, and then strong box for these. And if you have these characters, go for them. If you want to see how strong I think every character in the game is, check out my tier list video over there and have a great one.